My pleasure to introduce the CEO and co-founder of Global Citizen, Hugh Evans, who over the past decade has built a movement, millions of people strong around the world, working to end extreme poverty in support of United Nations global goals and much more. So Hugh, welcome to Signal. Great to have you here. Thank you so much, John. And thank you to PNG and Signal for having me. I'm really thrilled to be joining you again. And it's really wonderful to see you again. Great to see you. Uh, Hugh was kind enough to uh, sit for an interview uh, last fall for our Signal 360 uh, media platform. Uh, you can watch that there, but uh, let's get caught up. You've had some news. As a matter of fact, just this week, just uh, a day and a half ago, you made a big announcement. I'm gonna let you tell our audience what that announcement was. Yes, absolutely. This week, Global Citizen launched our most ambitious campaign yet. It's called Global Citizen Live. And it's something, John, that I feel like we've been rehearsing for the last 10 years to achieve this year. Because on September 25th this year, we're gonna host a live 24-hour global event on six continents all around the world, focused on the twin issues of defending the planet and defeating poverty. And this is really focused on, on building this unstoppable movement of citizens around the world who identify the urgent need to address the twin issues of climate change in, in the lead up to the COP26 climate change negotiations, and also to address the hunger crisis, given that 41 million people are now on the brink of starvation across the Horn of Africa. And so we're really mobilizing in this. We're gonna have events all around the world in Lagos, Rio de Janeiro, New York City, Los Angeles, Paris, Seoul, Korea, um, all around the world in six continents. And we're thrilled that some of the greatest artists on the planet have agreed to sign on to be part of it. So it's gonna be headlined by The Weeknd, Ed Sheeran, BTS out of Korea, Coldplay, Billie Eilish, Shawn Mendes, Lizzo, Andrea Bocelli, Metallica, Lord, Doja Cat, Keith Urban, Usher, Her, Duran Duran, the list goes on and on and on. The greatest artists of our generation have come together to support this particular moment where we can rally humanity focused on those twin issues of defending the planet, defeating poverty this September. That is a lineup. Uh, and as I understand it, um, this is sort of a hybrid event. It's a, it's a return uh, to the live events. I've gone to your Global Citizen Live events in New York, and there will be one right in New York. Uh, I'm not angling for an I'm not angling for an invite here. <laughs> You're uh, welcome to come, John. Please. <laughs> um, there will be one in New York, but around the world, as you point out. But it's also uh, an online uh, event, uh, and so you're sort of merging the two. And a little bit later, I want to ask you about, you know, running what has been understood to be uh, in the main a, you know, in-person execution of a global online campaign, uh, and what the pandemic did to that. But before I get there, I want to reset. Uh, in case folks aren't aware of, of sort of the founding uh, mythology, if you will, of your organization, what is a global citizen? What was the core idea that you all had um, that brought this together and created this extraordinary series? Well, at its core, a global citizen is someone who self-identifies not just as a member of a state or a tribe or their nation, but as a member of the human race and someone who's prepared to act on that belief to tackle the world's greatest challenges. And for the last 10 years, Global Citizen has been mobilizing tens of millions of citizens to call on world leaders to address the big structural issues. We, we, we believe that, that charity in the traditional sense is great. You know, it's great to build a water well in Kenya or a school in Uganda. But unless you identify, you know, why is there a poor health system or a poor water and sanitation system to begin with, mm -hmm. then you're really not addressing the core structural issues associated with sustainable development. So Global Citizen identifies what policies need to change, what world leaders need to step up, what business leaders need to step up, what ultra high net worth individuals need to step up. And we rally our tens of millions of members to take action all of those actions earn our Global Citizens points. They use those points to come to the Global Citizen Festival for free. But in doing so, we're able to rally world leaders to come on stage and make multi-billion dollar commitments for the eradication of extreme poverty and to tackle climate change. 
And since we were founded 10 years ago, over $48 billion has been announced on global citizen stages. And we've already distributed over $35.4 billion around the world that has impacted the lives of over a billion people on the planet. So really at the heart of our mission is about advocacy. We believe, as Nelson Mandela once said in his famous speech in Trafalgar Square back in 2005, he said, overcoming poverty is not a gesture of charity, but an act of justice. He said, like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It's man-made and can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings. That's why everything we do at Global Citizen focuses on actions. Action is the currency of the movement. Yeah, and that's, that, that, that really struck me when I first became aware of it uh, several years ago. Uh, that that is the that's you know how you become a member is to do something, um, and and, and that's you know and and that you're teaching a lot of people that it's possible to do that. So I, I commend you for that. Let's talk about um, last year. Uh, you sure. you know b besides you know all of the work that you're doing. Uh, you are running an organization that at the end of the day, very much like Signal, you're running events. People are getting together and that became impossible last year. Um, and you were sort of left with, uh, not unlike Mark Allen at Boeing, how, what do we do now? How did you respond to that? Uh, I'm kind of giving you a leading question, um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I know the answer, but I want you to, to, to give it to our audience. Um, how did you respond to COVID? Well, you know, just like everyone else, due to the pandemic, our plans changed dramatically overnight. And we were faced not only with the challenge of how do we tackle COVID because it's core to our mission, global health impacts global poverty, which is the heart of our mission. So it was, but then secondly, as you said, it became this existential crisis for us because all of a sudden all of our plans were shelved. And honestly, in the moment, my heart stopped and I was like, oh, my goodness, we're not going to be able to achieve our goals. But it's amazing how things change, even in, the, in, the, in, a, in a small instance, when I sat down with our team and I said, you know what, we've got to be of service immediately to the global community. And the next day I got a phone call from Dr. Tedros, the head of the World Health Organization. This was back in, in February, March, when the pandemic had just started. And he said, Hugh, we need global citizens to help mobilize money to provide personal protective equipment for doctors, nurses, and frontline healthcare workers. And so we're like, okay. And so the next day I sat down with Chris Martin of Coldplay and he planned this little concert in his studio, which was called One World Together at Home. And he started jamming away and people signed on and they started donating in support of this. And then it started going viral. John Legend did it the next day. Then, then members of One Direction got involved a few days later. And all of a sudden, it started to kick off. And in a matter of weeks, we got a call from Lady Gaga, who said she wanted to help take this and make this a global pandemic special. And so we created One World Together at Home in just three weeks. And it ultimately was headlined by everyone from the Rolling Stones through to Sir Paul McCartney, through to Elton John, Lady Gaga, the greatest artists of our generation. But most importantly, it raised $127.9 million for frontline community healthcare workers. And I'm pleased to tell you today that 100% of that money has been fully dispersed to provide PPE to doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers in 180 countries around the world. And as soon as we'd finished that, we thought, oh, okay, that was intense. But then literally a day after, we got a call from President von der Leyen, the head of the European Union, head of the European Commission. And she said, you know, could we partner with her and, and Bloomberg on a strategy to encourage the G7 nations to step up and help finance a vaccine to tackle COVID. This was back in June of last year. And so we said, okay, let's work on a strategy. We launched a campaign together called Global Goal Unite for Our Future. PNG was a huge part of that. And Mark Pritchard was intimately involved. We managed to get a whole range of amazing artists like Dwayne Johnson through to Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus. And everyone started advocating, calling on the G7 leaders to step up. And we were amazed because ultimately we got every single member of the G7 to step up and they committed over $1.5 billion in cash grants that went to fund both the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, but also pre-purchase vaccine doses 
through COVAX, which is the main facility that delivers vaccines around the world. And so again, you know, this was this really challenged us. But then as we came into this new year, into 2021, we knew that the fight wasn't over because even though there was a vaccines, there were vaccines that were being developed, they weren't yet rolled out. And so we launched earlier this year what we called the recovery plan for the world. It's a five-point recovery plan on how the world can recover post-COVID around addressing the health crisis, obviously, with COVID-19, the climate crisis in the lead-up to the COP26 negotiations, issues of equity, hunger, and education. And these five points were unveiled as part of our strategy earlier this year. But the first part of this strategy was to launch a new campaign we called Vax Live, yeah. the concert to reunite the world, which we hosted in May. And this concert um, came together extremely quickly because it was focused on trying to, at a time when no government was willing to share doses with, with any other, they were all hoarding their vaccine doses. We said, actually, the only way we're going to end COVID is to end it for everyone. Would you step up? And so, you know, Selena Gomez started tweeting at the uh, the president of Spain. Um, we had I I mean, Jennifer Selena Lopez Gomez signed. tweeting at the president of Spain is <laughs> just sort of the headline uh, of that. Um, it's just interesting the the, the the intersections that your organization, uh, you know, uh, sort of the, the the intersections of power, if you will, between culture and government that you, that you seem to really live in the midst of. Do you have a video about this? We do, yeah. Let's show the video because I want to show you the impact it had. Let's let's take that away. thing you can do is get vaccinated. The spirit is in us all to rally together and demand that no one is left behind. The virus does not respect borders and access to the vaccine cannot be determined by geography. That's a good taste of the kinds of uh, events <laughs> and energy that Global Citizen brings. Uh, so it, you were, but you were. I sort of interrupted you. You're in the midst of sort of building up to now, and I and I'm curious as you look towards September 25th. Uh, you briefly mentioned the focus of uh, of the event, and I'm sure you had many planning sessions where you're like, you know, should we continue to talk about? There's still a vaccine equity issue. There's still a COVID raging in many parts of the world but you chose to pull back and look at some of the biggest issues facing the planet again. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously right now, the world has only delivered 100 million vaccine doses to the majority of the world's poorest nations. So 75% of the doses have been used in just 10 countries on the planet, while 100 and 170, 180 odd countries have only got 100 million. So if you consider that like having half a million doses per country is absolutely despicable. And so we still have an, a fight for vaccine equity underway. But while the pandemic has, has been raging, two huge issues have emerged. Firstly, we're seeing that 150 million people have been pushed back into extreme poverty and 41 million people are on the brink of starvation and there's no herd immunity for poverty. This is literally economic destruction taking place right before us. And the second thing is that while we saw a small amount of progress on climate change while everyone was in lockdown, in fact, progress on climate change is actually halted as the vast majority of the Fortune 500 companies have actually failed to make science-based carbon reduction targets that would actually limit climate change to below that 1.5 degree Celsius critical temperature limit. So we must rectify this immediately. And if we don't do so now, we're frankly going to run out of time. Secretary John Kerry 
calls it our last best hope, and we agree wholeheartedly. And so as we look towards September, you know, yes, we need a billion doses delivered within the 2021 calendar year, but the twin issues that we're going to be fighting hard on are firstly, can we see mass reforestation and protecting the trees that we have that are the lungs of the earth? And secondly, can we address the hunger crisis by making sure at least $6 billion is pledged towards relief efforts and providing meals for the fo meals for the 41 million people on the brink of starvation. These, I believe, are the moral challenges of our generation. And I, I, I believe, again, as Mandela said, that every generation has this opportunity to do something great. This is our once in a generation moment to do something truly great and not to allow you know, us to be distracted by, by the daily news cycle churn, but take a higher view and say, we've got to fight for these issues urgently. Yeah, I, um, it, it almost feels to me, listening to some of the other speakers in the, over the last two days, that it's not once in a generation. This, this feels like once in a lifetime or maybe once in a mm. civilization. <laughs> um, mm. uh, and, and so, you know, I certainly wish you, uh, you know, all the fortune uh, as it relates to uh, the September event. Uh, I, I want to ask you, you know, because I've asked everyone uh, this question, uh, you partner, as you have and are with P&G, with very large corporations as it relates to your work. And I'm sure it's crucial to underwriting that work. Um, can you comment on what you see as the role of corporations in society, how that's changed over the life of Global Citizen, uh, and where you see it going? Well, I think that um, the reason why we partner with P&G is corp I believe corporations are not nebulous figures. They're made up of individuals, and those individuals set a culture. And what I saw in Mark Pritchard and in Allison and, and their wonderful team is a culture that's leading from the front on societal issues. PNG is one of the only Fortune 500 companies, only one of the quarter of them, that have actually made science-based emission reduction targets. So it shows that they're putting their money where their mouth is, that they're really willing to lead on the issues that matter most. And that's why we at Global Citizen are so proud to partner with PNG because they're sincerely working to make an impact. And I think that, you know, as we look at, 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 the, at the imperative of business to be part of social change, in the past it was relinquished to corporate social responsibility departments. Now, if you don't integrate it into your ent entire supply chain strategy, then you will be left behind by all of your peers and customers and suppliers will move to other, to other partners. And so that's why I think it's awesome that PNG is leading the way, not just on climate change, also on water and sanitation, also on gender equality, on so many issues that are at the heart of Global Citizen's mission. Procter & Gamble has genuinely been leading powerfully. And I think that it shows up in, in one simple example, if I can just share with you, particular anecdote. So Mark Pritchard and I, when we were working on campaigns like this, he and I and, and Diego Scotti often have a conversation about how do we engage the media? And Mark is so wonderful. Is He literally is willing to call up some of the best, um, whether it's, you know, best partners like CBS or ABC and say to them, you know, can you use your programming for good? Because I'm a big believer that media has the ability to create change. And, and Mark works with these amazing partners like CBS or like ABC and says, you know, we're willing to put our advertising dollars alongside great programming. That's an example of PNG using their immense advertising power alongside analyzing their supply chains, alongside investing in causes that can have a huge impact. And so I'm, I'm a huge believer in this integrated strategy that corporations like PNG are adopting. And I think it's only happens because internally at PNG, there are great people who, who really care. That would never happen if the culture wasn't right. And so I think it's a tribute to your organization. It's a tribute to what PNG stands for, and that's why we're so proud to work together. It's, um, you know, as much as we talk about how great some of these companies are, you point out it is still a minority of the companies that have mm. made these commitments. Is there a point, that's right. at, is there a point at which you could see this movement start to exert pressure on more than governments. 
uh, and, and perhaps mm -hmm. start to exert pressure on corporations to say, hey, guys, you know, we need you to step up. Well, it's interesting because this week, um, Mark Pritchard and, and Chris Martin of Coldplay hosted a, a roundtable on this topic that Global Citizen was able to convene just a few days ago. And there was real alignment around the idea that it's much better to encourage people with positivity than to force people to the table. Mm -hmm. Because society changes when you inspire people to act. And I think that Already, I'm seeing amongst all of the partners we work with that they're racing now to keep up with each other in respect of their social commitment and that, that social contract that they're making with their customers, with their suppliers. And so I actually believe that, yes, this year, global citizens will be calling on corporations and on ultra-high net worth individuals. You've got to keep in mind that the ultra-high net worth community gained trillions of dollars during the pandemic while others were left behind. So it's also responsibility of the ultra high net worth community to also step up. But I think that most importantly, we're also going to continue to celebrate those who are leading because we do believe that if you, if you provide a platform and you truly celebrate those that are leading, then those that aren't will be jolted into doing better. And I think that jolt is inevitably going to happen. We're just trying to accelerate it faster because we need urgent action on climate change and we need urgent action to make sure that the 41 million people on the brink of starvation have the food security they need this year. So I think you're right. Like there is this kind of sense that, you know, can we pressure them? And, and, and we always, you know, Global Citizen as an advocacy organization is about the power of citizen action. But I think that demonstrating effect of corporate leadership also has a huge impact. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So uh, in, the, in the last minute or two we have, uh, please tell us again, uh, how can folks get involved uh, in this event this September and in supporting what you're doing? Well, wherever you are in the world, we encourage you to be part of Global Citizen Live. Go to globalcitizenlive.org and you can sign up to be the first to have updates. We're going to have, you know, events all around the world, on the continent of Africa, across Europe, in North and Latin America. We're going to be in the Middle East, in Asia, in Australia. We're really going to be all around the world this September. So wherever you are, you have an opportunity to be part of this. And so sign up at globalcitizenlive.org and start taking action. And all of your actions will earn you points. And you can see how our policy team is carefully curating actions that call on governments because then we can unlock billions of dollars in new financing in the lead up to this September. But the other thing you can do, and this is something that we, we soft launched with PNG actually a few weeks ago, is we've been working on a new television series that's going to be on CBS later this year called The Activist. It's a multi-part primetime television series in the race up to the G20 meeting in Rome, Italy. And this is really, in, you know, I've always believed that... Um, like 10 years ago, there weren't very many famous, you know, chefs on television, but now people look up to chefs and cooking and they say, okay, that's really cool. And I see that, you know, you've got the great activists of our time, like Malala, Greta Thunberg, but what if we were to give a platform to other young activists and enable them to become the next Malala or become the next Greta Thunberg? And that's what the activist TV series is all about. That's why PNG Global Citizen and CBS announced this exciting partnership. And, and you can watch that on CBS later this year. It's going to air in October, and we couldn't be more thrilled about how it's coming together. Well, hopefully we can have some of the folks who uh, are on that competition and on that show here at Signal uh, next year. That would be great. Um, and Hugh, thank you so much for bringing your passion and energy to Signal. Uh, really appreciate it, and best of luck in September. Thank you, John. Thank you to everyone at PNG for your amazing partnership.